actually, I saw Christian Klein. I had a chance to talk to him a little bit when I was in Davos uh, last nice. week. Yeah, it was good to see him. Uh, always good to chat. But, uh, you know, this is another company that's in a transformational story. Um, you know, SAP is, uh, you know, by far one of the most implemented and deployed software stacks on the planet for companies, ERP and operationally running their businesses. And of course they have a lot of diversification in other areas, but best known of course for ERP. Um, you know, the company did well, you know, it, it beat what the street was expecting and it had a, a good outlook. And so, you know, it was a mostly positive quarter overall, but the numbers everybody's been watching, the numbers I've been telling people to watch it for the last several quarters have been in the cloud. It's, is the company growing their cloud revenue? Are they uh, building a cloud backlog? Are they making more profit in the cloud? Are they accelerating their cloud? And then, of course, um, you know, how are they tying and being able to complement the AI uh, innovation that it's making to winning more customers? You know, the key for SAP is going to be getting their customers to S4, getting their customers running on a clean core uh, so that they can actually build uh, and expand on their business. Now, having said that, um, Probably the most interesting data point of their earnings this quarter was their uh, note that they're going to be making some transitions on personnel. I think there's about 8,000 people affected. I do have to call that out because when I put that out as a tweet and on LinkedIn, I had a lot of people commenting on that. And over the last couple of years, it's been, uh, you know, companies have been looking at technology, looking at how to optimize their businesses. And this is one of those things where behind these conversations, there's always a balance of people and, and technology. Uh, I think 8,000 is not all displaced. It's not all about, I think it's some of them are going to get different roles. They're looking at kind of how to reskill people, how to change roles for people, and some of them be bought out packages. Um, that, was, that was very interesting, uh, but not surprising. Having said that, that was a footnote that I think uh, over the next few quarters, you'll see new, new waves of growth in SAP coming from their AI investments and AI technology. Um, as the company gets their customers over to S4, running on clean core, this is gonna be where the opportunity comes for the company to expand. It's gonna be where their newest and best AI innovation will be visible, uh, not just Jewel, their overall business AI strategy. It's the ability to take data, deliver it to insights, do it very quickly. And of course, the company's also very focused on operationalizing and streamlining workflows. Um, this was something I heard a lot on the earnings call. This is something I've heard a lot through the readout is that SAP, end to end is becoming more and more capable. And if you are in uh, on S4, it's more and more capable to deliver what the enterprise and the enterprise of the future needs. So, you know, Pat, you saw 20% revenue growth in cloud, 25% uh, uh, for the year, sorry, and 25% for the quarter. So it's accelerating. You saw the backlog grow uh, from 25 to 25%. You saw the profit grow uh, up 23%. So good numbers overall. Um, you know, the operating profit was down a little bit, something to watch. But like I said, Pat, I think if they can keep accelerating cloud revenue, the company will be in good shape. Dan, great, uh, great breakdown. You know, there was so much richness in this. You didn't take all the oxygen out of this room. I mean, on, on Q4, I mean, if you remember years back uh, of the critics, and I was one of them, that, that SAP really didn't have a cloud strategy. And here we are uh, for the fourth quarter, uh, they had 20% growth. They have a 25% cloud backlog. They have a growth of 20% in cloud revenue, 55% uh, growth on S4 HANA, right? Largest growth in, in five quarters. So accelerating. Uh, SAP got a slower start, but man, are they making up for it uh, right now? And it, it kind of reminds me of Oracle. Uh, and, you know, SAP doesn't do um, IaaS. Uh, but they do uh, SaaS and pass. I really did appreciate the breakout. And I don't know if this is a new breakout or maybe I just was asleep at the wheel, but I appreciated the 19% growth on SaaS and a 42% growth on, on, on pass services. You know, 2023 net net, Dan, they did what they said uh, they would do and they're being rewarded for that. So what does 24 and, and 25 mean? Right. So revenue growth is going to come. Uh, their plan is to come from uh, rise with SAP and grow with SAP, uh, expanding right through BTP flywheel 
uh, cross-selling all of their uh, PaaS, SaaS, and software uh, capabilities, uh, generating uh, revenue through uh, business AI. And they talked a lot about strategic <clears throat> M&A uh, M &A partnerships. Interesting, strategic M&A. We could probably spend an entire uh, session on that. And their plan for profitability, right, is, you know, transformation, which is a combination of kind of rebalancing heads. And, you know, I feel awful for anybody who ever gets laid off. But I have to tell you, I've been laid off at most companies. Um, uh, and it always ended up being a much uh, better opportunities. For the record, it was never for performance. I had a business unit shut down. Uh, at, at NCR, um, Alta Vista offered to move me uh, from sunny Southern California to Palo Alto. <laughs> I said, eh, I'm going to AMD. But uh, yeah, and AMD had three months of cash left. They needed to get rid of people like me who weren't an engineer or in sales. But anyways, I, I digress. Uh, profit also driven by cloud ERP. Interesting, interesting. Do you hear that? Oracle NetSuite. Uh, and fusion. So yeah, and I, I got to tell you, one thing I really appreciated about uh, what SAP does on its earnings, it seems to be more strategic than, and I don't know if that's because it's a German company and that's what the requirement are, uh, or they just have more uh, wiggle room where they don't get, you know, they don't get whacked by, you know, the, the, the German SEC uh, for this, but some really good insights that uh, uh, that they brought out. 